Welcome, my dear students. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome, my dear students. Welcome back. Uh, this is a lecture, the first lecture in organizational behavior. And we will talk here about some topics regarding the organizational behavior, starting from uh, the beginning. And here we go. Today, we are having a uh, uh, two topics, we'll talk about the definition of uh, organ, but first of all, I just want to show you how our curriculums will go, how our curriculums will go here. We will have introduction to organizational behavior. We will talk about the social diversity in the workplace, ethics and business. We'll talk about the individual and personal behavior. We'll talk about the organizational culture. The most important are the motivations in workplace and the stress and the emotions and the effect of the behavior. We'll talk about communication in the workplace. The group dynamics, we'll talk about managing groups and teams. Conflict and negotiations, decision-making, leadership, organizational structure, and finally, organizational change. We'll have all these lectures. Some of them will be one and two, like one lecture. So we have, because we will finish by 15 February. So the, till the time we have to work on these to topics in parallel together, uh, we will be handled them. Okay, that's fine. Let's move on now to the, what is the meaning of the, what the meaning of the uh, organizational behavior? The OB or the organizational behavior is directly connected with understanding, prediction, means that you can forecast and control of human behavior in organizations. So again, concerned with understanding, prediction, and control of human behavior in organizations. Also, there is another definition, organization behavior is a field of study that investigates the impact that individuals, groups, and structure have on behavior with organizations for the purpose of applying such knowledge towards improving an organization's effectiveness. So the word effectiveness here means the performance is high. We have those, the first one for Rosens and the second definition for uh, Stephen and Robbins. Cool, that is the organization behavior. So understanding the organizational behavior the first of all, that it is a dynamic, the dynamic study of this uh, organization through the behaviors of its member. So members uh, are interacting. They are not the statistics. They are not the statics. They are not pieces of food. They are moving, interacting with each other. Intended to explain behavior, to make behaviors or also, or predictions about the behavior. So when I know that you are acting like this, so I can expect how you will act in the future, how you'll act in the future. This is the point. Incomplete components of management psychology, leadership, personality traits, and motivations, etc. Okay. We'll go here now to the core of the organizational behavior and how it looks like. And what are the motions, the scientific motions, which help in evaluating the study of the organizational behavior. We started with the scientific management here, then we went to the administrative management, then the bureaucratic, bureaucratic model, then human relation theory, then system theory, then X and Y management theory. All these theories, they discuss the point of the human or organizational behavior as well. Starting from the left, scientific management, then administrative, then bureaucratic, then human, then system, then finally the X and Y management theory for Douglas McGregor. All these effects on the organizational behavior like you see here. Also, I want to tell you that the organizational behavior, we have objectives or tasks or goals for the organizational behavior. There are tasks or goals. What are they? We have to... The first goal is to describe the behavior. Second, we try to know, identify the behavior so that we can influence the behavior. Influence the behavior like influence the behavior like we try to affect it positively so that it can 
increase the productivity of the workers, increase the performance. So we will focus on the positive aspects of the behavior here. Also, to understand behavior, so describing behavior, influencing behavior, understanding the behavior, and predict behavior. What do you mean by predict behavior? From your own characteristics and from your own behavior of the past, I can predict or forecast how you will act in the future. So as examples, if you are a guy who would like to be co-op, to co-op with the other uh, colleagues uh, at work, so I expect that this behavior will be long lasting in the future, will last in the future, right? Uh, the elements of organization uh, behavior are people, of course, in the first source structure, because we say organization. So organization means such organizational behavior. So organization means there must be a structure. There must be also a technology, a level of technology we're using, and there must be environment, and there must be environment. That now I will come to the point, the first point which I want to talk today about, and I would say uh, two questions here. The first question is one, define organizational behavior. This is the first question. So I will leave here like around two minutes to have the answer of this question. I will leave around five, two minutes to three minutes to have the answer of this question. So it's the study of the behavior of humans at work, like we said before. The second question is, what are the main components? of organizational behavior. What are the main components of organizational behavior? And this is the second question. So we have two questions right till the moment. We have two questions right till the moment. What are, what is the meaning of uh, organizational behavior and the components of organizational behavior? Of course, I will enlarge the questions. So you guys can see it to be clear, and I will put it also in a green color like this. So here it will be shown up uh, clear for you. The two questions which we had at the moment, and I will keep around five minutes here before I move to another part. Okay, here we go. These are some questions I want you to see as example. In addition to advance in technology, what was a large motivation in the development of management theory during the industrial revolution? Actually in the industrial revolution era, uh, they, they care too much about the productivity. They care too much, they didn't care for of the, uh, they didn't care of the person just for the sake of the person, but of the, of the individuals, not because they only uh, taking care of the individuals, but because the individuals are the one who will produce. So they care more about the productivity than they care about the human humans who are working. For that reason, that was one of the reasons to study the human behavior at work, the productivity. So the answer of this question simply is the word productivity, is the word productivity. This is the answer of this question, is the productivity. 
Which of the following uh, statements describe the scientific management theory? What is the scientific management theory? It has been created by uh, Frederick Taylor. And in the management, this uh, theory, uh, the focus was on the time and motion studies, and also the division of labors. Each one will be specialized in what he can do. Each worker will be specialized in what he can do. So here, a 14 principles, no, the 14 principles were done by, in the administrative theory, by Henry Fayol. The belief that workers are lazy and not to be caused into performing, this is Douglas McGregor theory. The second, finding the most efficient two most efficient and the effective ways to complete tasks. Yes, yes. So it was, I think, I believe in the work itself. Yeah, I believe in the work. I want the work to be done in effective way. That's why the uh, scientific theory, how to do the work if, to the limit that they did time and motion studies to only to practice uh, reducing the waste time for the workers. How is management theory connected to organizational behavior? Management theory established the foundation of organizational behavior because management theory started, then after that, it studied the organizational behavior. The same theorist uh, theorists who developed uh, management theory developed organization, but no, no, not all of them. There is no connection between organization behavior and management theory. Absolutely no. Organizational theory helped it to develop management theory. No, the management theory is the one who helped to develop organizational theory and not the opposite. So let us go back for the sentence. Probably sentence A would be the right management theory establish the foundation of organizational behavior. And this is the real answer here in this part. So this is the real answer for this question. Now, so the, let's, what we said, understanding the organizational behavior, the academic study of organization through behaviors, we study the organization from the behaviors, extend to uh, explain behavior and make behavioral predictions. So like I said, I know I study your behavior so that I know how you will act in the future. Incomplete components of management, psychology, leadership, personality traits, and motivation. So that's how it includes many things in the same time. So the organizational behavior include everything about the management, like we said, psychology, just remember when I was talking to you yesterday, we said uh, there are a lot of things correlated to studying the organizational behavior, uh, a lot of topics for, uh, for the organization. Also the personality traits and the motivations all goes within this category. How can organization behavior affect and influence all around us through three levels? The individual, the group, and the organization. Here, like here is the individual or the group of people or the organization as well. So it will be affected by three levels, the organizational behavior. Okay, we'll go right now to another part. And I said the main key points of the organizational behavior are the structure, the people, the technology, and the environment. Those are the three things which we need for organizational behavior. If we say what is the nature of the organization behavior, and the talk is very close by what we said just now, it focus on the behavior of individuals. It is interdisciplinary. It is an applied science. It is art as well. So art of understanding the people, art how they are acting. It adopts a humanistic approach its ultimate aim is to attain the organizational objectives. Yes. So the main core or task 
for the organizational behavior is a better performance. And the better performance will increase the organizational uh, objectives. That's how it works. So that's how it works. So here, like we said, individuals, groups, structures. Same likewise what I said there. Here, group, organization, the individual. Here, group, organization means the structure, which is the structure. Okay. Yes, we can say, is it unique? Is it unique? The organizational behavior is unique? Yes. It includes a wide range of topics and is always adapting because we said it's a mixture of many things. We will study many, thing, many things here. And this is the right answer. Behavior is a simple topic. No. Organization behavior is another management theory. No. No. This is something. And this is another thing. Management theory is something. And organization behavior is another point. Organization behavior is not unique. It's no. It's unique. It's unique. Why? Because it includes a, a wide range of topics and is always adapting wide range of topics. We said that it affects in three levels of code, on the individual, the group, and organization. So what are the effects? The effects, what are the three levels of effect? Here it is, the answer, individuals, groups, and organization. And that is the real answer, the right answer. Because it affects on the three of them. It affects on the individuals, or the group, or the organization. Logical emotion, no. This might be inside one person. Informal psychological, no. Private, public, and corporate, also no. So the answer is individuals, group, and organization. That's a real answer. Uh, there are models for the organization behavior. Yes, we have four models of the organization behaviors. We have custodial model. We have autocratic model. We have supportive model and we have collegial model. So let us take them one by one. The autocratic model of organizational behavior, the manager uses his authority and directs the subordinates to do the work as per his specification. He tell them here, autocratic means he don't listen to anyone. The manager here do not listen to anyone. The manager here is deprived by the rules, deprived by the rules. He is derived by the rules. He, he, he gets his power from the structure, the organizational structure, but not from the love of the people like the leader. We call it the autocratic models usually don't listen to others. They talk only, but they don't listen. This is a, another problem in them. So under the employee autocratic model, under the autocratic model, the employee are made to work like machines. They just have to pay, obey the orders. Yeah, they just have to pay, obey the orders. How about the custodial models? What do we mean by the custodial model? In the custodial model, uh, the situation is different than here. So if under the autocratic, which you talk about, the employee has to depend on his boss all the time, under the custodial model, he has to depend on the organization. So here in the custodial, I depend on the organization, but I don't depend on my own uh, boss. OK, the organization takes care of all needs of employees. This is done by the introduction of a number of welfare measures like rent-free accommodation, subsidized food, free education, 
for the children of employees and so on. So we have now the custodial mode is a mode that the organization is interested in the employee. The, in this model, the uh, organization is interested in the employee. Such welfare me measures make the employee dependent on the organization that becomes their custodians. It's exactly like a father and son, like the father and son. Custodial, like I, I cut like a custody. I am totally responsible about you. This is the second model. The third model is the supportive model. In this case, the manager supports his subordinates in the performance of their tasks. The focus here is on managerial leadership rather than on the exercise of authority. So here, the focus here is on the managerial leadership. Look at this. This is the first time we see this word, leadership. And I told you, leader is loved by all surrounding by all the people around him, the leader is beloved. Everyone love him. Leader will say, as example, let us do this work. But he will not say, hey, guys, do this. He will never say like this. Rather than on the exercise of authority or fulfillment of subordinate needs. The manager does not make uh, uh, unilateral decisions. He cannot make decisions alone. The manager, the manager might make decisions alone, but the leader never, the leader never do decisions alone, but involves his subordinates in the decision-making process. The supportive model is suitable in those workplaces where the employees are self-motivated. This is very important, very, very important, because it tell me when to work in this model. Uh, if the management care and give a free span to the workers to make decisions. There is a kind of delegation for authorities. There is decentralization in the company. Then this model, supportive model, will be working very well because it depends on the uh, employee's um, independency. It depends on them. It depends on the employees. So, this kind of supportive model will help the people uh, if they can take decisions alone. Collegial model, and this is the last model for the uh, organizational behavior studies, the fourth model. In the collegial model, the manager participate in the process of task performance by subordinates. In other words, the manager and subordinates work as a team. So I, I just this want this word. I want this word, I will put it green. The manager and the subordinates work as a team. This is what I want. This is what I want. Okay, of course, this better interaction among the team members, such as approach. So here he's a part, the manager is a part of the team, a part of the team. Those are the uh, four main uh, sources or, or uh, theories of the organizational behavior models. Now, the question here will be, what are discuss? Discuss. I will write it here down right now. Discuss the organizational behavior models. So here we go. Discuss the organizational behavior models. This is the question. So you have four four answers for. Uh, parts of the answer. Like here, I told you before, we have here uh, the custodial, the supportive, the autocratic, and the collegial. And we said about them, each one, what is the function of each one of them? 
Shall I stop here now for this question, like around five minutes before I move to the next part of the video? Okay, guys, we'll move now to the next video. Thank you so much.